Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our next Excellence Above webinar for December 2013. And we're talking about partnering and networking tonight, aren't we, Grant Dempsey? That's right, Ed. It's great to be here this evening and uh, have this opportunity just to talk with you tonight. And beautiful. We have one amazing turnout. So be it you're listening to this live or watching this on YouTube afterwards, what we do say is tonight is about questions. It's about you and it's about improving your understanding. We're going to give you some amazing content on the house. Why are we giving away all these brilliant ideas on the house, Grant? Are we insane or stupid? <laughs> What's the reason for that, Grant? Look, it, it's in our interest to help uh, people to grow and develop in their networking because the more efficient networkers that we have, the more value they're going to be putting into the community and the better for everyone. So uh, it means that there's more to go around and the benefit is for everyone. Wow, so I couldn't be better spoken myself now. Um, a lot of people on the line that I don't know actually, and a few that I knew, a few uh, familiar faces, so quite a few tonight, so please excuse if I don't say hello to you all. But this is me, I'm the Middle Eastern guy on the top left, that's my cat in the top who's running around with a little bell, and a recent workshop that we've run, and really look, what tonight is, is tonight's an opportunity, and tonight's an opportunity for you to really understand what networking is, how to network, how not to do it. What are the true chips, what are your objectives, and how can you make it a functional part of your business? Now what's interesting is we have the expert, of the Managing Director of 4Networking Australia, Grant Dempsey, and it's great to have him here. So here's a big thing, we love being hired as well. Grant Dempsey and I love selling our products, so part of our helping you is also proving you that we know our stuff, and it is all a pleasure to have you here. Now here's a big thing, we're going to dump you with a tip truck, we're going to fill a tip truck up full of plenty of powerful advice and dump it on you. Now, Please don't worry about overwhelm. Take one step at a time and we're around for questions. So you'll notice that you've got a little chat box. Um, so feel free to type in questions and ask us. And the more questions we have, the better. And the other thing is as well, if you're on YouTube or you're seeing this afterwards, feel free to drop us a line. Visit our website. Come and email us. And here's the thing. I've uh, been a marketer since my early 20s. I've actually clocked up 20,000 uh, plus consulting hours now, so I'd better change that. And I work seven days a week. In fact, Grant, do you think I'm a complete insane workaholic? <laughs> Ed's completely nuts, so uh, he is probably the hardest working business coach I know. Uh, the great thing about that for you is that he's learned a lot in a, in a fairly short period of time. Uh, he's made a lot of mistakes and he's, had, he's kicked a lot of goals, so you get the benefit of that because he has been a, a workaholic. Uh, not so good for him, but great for you. Yeah, no wonder my relationships never work out right, Grant. So there you go. <laughs> so if there's any pretty girls on the line, you know where to find me. <laughs> anyway, so where <laughs> was I? Back to work. And this is a big thing. And this is a thing what I say to a lot of people. Uh, oh, Mr. Slide. Um, a lot of people that come in for networking or even work with me as clients usually make quite a few mistakes and a lot of people feel bummed out. So if you're feeling that way, please forgive yourself and don't worry about it. All our mistakes are part of our educational tapestry. So I invite you to draw a line in the sand, forgive yourself now and get ready to go to the next level. And the reality is of marketing and uh, business and being an entrepreneur, we all make mistakes and what we say is test and measure. So all the stuff that we're teaching tonight, take it on, decide to do something with it and test and measure. If something works more, do more of it. If something doesn't work, tweak it, tweak it, tweak it till it does work. Now here's a big thing. We're here to talk about business networking time. Here's a photo of Grant Dempsey. Right. Grant Dempsey, my hero. Obviously, I've got a bromance for Grant Dempsey, so he's got to watch his legs. I don't put uh, my hand on it. And look, where, um, the thing I love about Grant Dempsey is Grant Dempsey, he bought out for networking. He's a, a New Zealander. You're a New Zealander, aren't you, Grant? Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. He's a, he's a New Zealander. He's like the guy from Once Warriors, but no, he won't beat you up. But you're actually part Maori, aren't you? Uh, yep, I'm, I'm one-eighth uh, Tangata Whenua. Yeah, people like uh, Grant's a white guy though, for the record, so <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Well, that sounded racist, you know, I'm not racist. Uh-oh, it's been recorded too. So look, Grant bought out for networking from the UK, um, and he runs it across Australia. So he's a managing director and owner with his wife, uh, Karen Dempsey. And what was amazing about Grant is, um, I was pretty washed up. During the global financial crisis, I got washed up. And Grant was an amazing man that took me up under his wing and helped me get the business off the um, helped me get my own business off the ground. So I used to be a volunteer for networking. Then later on, he basically made me a part-time staff member and I helped run the group across Sydney. Entrepreneur and ex-counselor. And tell us a bit about that for a second. You worked in high-risk situations, didn't you? In your, uh, look, in your old days? Yeah, look, my, back, my background's in psychology and counselling, so I have a master's in psychology and years of counselling experience, but one of the things that I noticed was that 
when people, I had clients who were in small business or in business, when they were struggling in their relationships, then their business was struggling and vice versa. And, and my role in helping them with their relationships uh, would improve their business. So one of the one of the compelling factors for my wife and I to to start for networking is we've seen and we, we've also had a small business where we employed up to thirty people in our busy times. Uh, we've seen and, and experienced the pressures with uh, managing staff, managing leases, uh, making payroll, and all those things. So and we know the pressures, and we've seen the pressures on people. So we. We were excited to see a network like Four Networking that's about helping and supporting uh, local business people, and because it's just something that it, it can be pretty lonely, it can be pretty tough. You can have some great wins in small business, but you can have some heavy losses at times too. And so much of it is is not dependent on you; it's dependent upon other influences when you're small. And so it's great to be in a community of people who can help you out and you can support you and encourage one another. And that's what we liked about uh, for networking and why we brought it out. Mm, so amazing model. And um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm actually going to go very quickly. Because again, it's, tonight's more about Grant. In my webinars, I love partnering with experts. But I'm going to go through very quickly my own take on networking and also the channel partner strategies that we teach. Now, business networking and channel partnering, especially channel partnering is one of the strategies I teach. And I've a lot of clients right now who previously didn't have big businesses that are making tens of thousands and some hundreds of thousands of dollars through the channel and partnering strategies that I'm going to give away to free to you for now. So should I give them the free stuff, Grant? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's give it to you. I'm a, I'm a wealthy man. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot through it quickly. Grant, feel free to jump in with any points. And then I'm just going to let Grant take over. I'm just going to um, dip in uh, and poke my nose into his fine work. So first things first, so you guys can read. This is what business networking is, and to me, business networking is one of the most important things of running a small business, be it you're out there for clients directly or building your own support community. And to me, my own personal take is networking is the commercial practice of building win-win sustainable business relationships where you help each other become wealthy and successful. Now, that's just simple terms. In very simple street terms, you become part of a group, you make lots of friends, and you help each other make lots of money by referring each other business and that type of thing. That's really what it is. Now, as part of the networking experience, and this is the way I look at it, networking to me, and let's say you go to a networking group with 30 people around, it's about you giving first, becoming part of the community, building a community of people who work with you, and actually they act as your sales force. So let's say you've got friends of 20 people. Those 20 people are constantly looking for business to refer to you. Now, really what it is is that in terms of business networking, the way I look at it is you can go to networking events and make, get clients directly. And one of the important strategies is actually becoming partners with them. So they both sell and refer business to each other. Now I'm going to talk about it soon. What's your quick take on that, Grant, before I hand it over to you? Yeah, that's exactly right, Ed. I think you've nailed it when you say that it's beyond the meeting and that it's about building relationships outside of meetings. So often people go to meetings and expect to have uh, work placed on the table beside their bacon. And it just doesn't work that way. It's about building mutually beneficial relationships outside. And we see that uh, we've experienced it both. I mean, Ed and I have, a, have, have benefited each other's uh, business for, for nearly three years now. So we, we're, we're kind of living proof of that. And we have so many examples of that where people have been, uh, people have, have, have gained so much benefit from their relationships. And it's not always just about uh, me giving someone a referral or they're giving me a referral. It's about the opportunities, the connections that we can put each other's way and, and even even the, the non-quantifiable things like just encouraging one another or saying something to someone that needs to be said, like, you know, your business cards are rubbish, mate. You need to get some new ones. Yeah. Uh, Which happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> and now, and, and, and what's really interesting is most, cause most, most most of us start out without a lot of cash, so uh, it's good to have people who are kind of pulling us along and, and encouraging us to, to increase our professionalism, increase our marketing collateral and just look more professional and act more professional and, and target um, higher value clients. And so it's great to have, have partners who are prepared to go along the journey with you. Exactly. Very well put. Very, very well put. And so what I'm going to do is, before I hand over to Grant, I'm just going to quickly shoot through um, myself on channel partnering. And to me, this is a very important strategy. So again, if you've got any questions, uh, please send them through. And of course, Grant and I love being hired, so keep that in mind. Um, and if you're an existing client, just 
give me a call anytime. Don't give me a call during the webinar, of course. <laughs> give me a call afterwards. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is I'm um, talk about channel partners. Now, channel partners and channel partnering is a term from the corporate space. It's basically a term where companies talk about other parties that aren't owned by them that help them sell their services. So, for example, let's say you're JB Hi-Fi. Your um, JB Hi-Fi would be channel partners of companies like Dell, Samsung, Apple, for example. Okay, small business the same. Now here's a, a photo of myself and Jim Gordon. He's uh, one of my clients. He works from Telstra. He's a channel partner of mine. We actually refer business to each other, and that's an example um, of how we actually do it. In the next slide that's coming up, this is my uh, colleague Martha. She runs a few of the four networking groups. That's um, the one with the glasses. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the cat's Pandy, who's um, actually sleeping next to us. Uh, and yeah, you know, we refer. She's a website person. We refer business to each other as well. And really, what channel partnering is great for um, the, the clients I have that have seven figures, like the big shots. A lot of them use channel partnering to actually build their businesses because if you think about it, you don't need much cash to build relationships with twenty people to refer your business. It might take time, but you actually don't need the cash. So it's one of the cheapest and most powerful referral strategies, especially if you're in the small business game, you know, and be it your business to business or business to consumer, there's all different things. So look, and this, and one was going to run through 10 quick steps because I want to hand over to Grant because it's not every day that we get Grant here. And here are the 10 step channel partner process, processes. Oh, there's a typo. Yes, I didn't get it proofread, so you guys win. Ha, ha, ha. Number one, network and identify potential partners. So let's say you don't know people to connect with. Go out networking, identify people that you can connect with and usually what it is is that you might be in a totally different industry but you serve the same target market. So for example, I'm partnered with copywriters uh, and website people. Well, as being a marketing mentor, um, that's a pretty organic pick but I'm also partnered with people um, like Jim from Telstra. He's a Telstra guy, he's not a marketer. Um, I'm partnered um, you know, with um, Cat Tate who's a copywriter a bit distant. I'm partnered with HR people. Okay. So step one, identify them. Step two, Meet them for coffee or lunch and see how you feel. See if there's a potential fit and you meet like now and trust in each other and you can walk, work together. Three, after you've sort of, it's a bit like a date, isn't it? You know, you sort of got to date people. What's your whole uh, approach on getting to know people over business? I think it's like dating, Grant. What do I you think? I think it's exactly like the dating, Ed. I think that it's really, I mean, you've probably done it and I've probably done it where we've, we've entered into to partnerships with people that we don't really get along with. Yeah. And, it, it always turns to custard. Yeah, yeah. And, and we like custard, but not when our business turns into it. So what, what it is, you meet people, make sure there's a fit. Then three, after you've met the person the first time, we say, organize a follow-up meeting to openly talk about partnering. So you're not just, after the first meeting, you get to know someone. The second meeting we generally recommend, um, you're not just there to just hang out and drink coffee. You openly say before you meet them, look, I want to talk to you about partnering. I want to look at how we can refer business to each other so people know exactly what it's about. Here's another photo of myself and Chris Dunwell, who's a HR consultant uh, who I'm partnered with, is four, is work out an arrangement to suit you both so you both know what you're after. So there's a picture of me and Chris Dunwell. And in that case, you know, um, Chris Dunwell is a HR consultant, so if there's a good intro for him, I'd love to hand it over. And if he's got a good intro for me, so let's say someone who wants a bit of public speaking, a bit of workshop facilitation, or a good small business client, Chris sends them my way. So, got to be clear. Point five, be the first to give an introduction. So if you enter into a relationship with someone, be the first to give. So let's say you're a hot Persian guy who's um, back on the dating scene. you got to buy the girl dinner first. Is that right, Grant? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not so sure about that one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe I should just stick to marketing and yeah. just uh, die an old maid. But the point being is um, always be the first. If, you, if, you're starting, if you're meeting with someone, you're going to start referring each other to business, be the first to give the introduction. And then, of course, once you've referred them a business, ask them for some in return. It's got to be a two-way street. Seven, deliver perfect service and thank them. If someone gives you a referral, thank them and appreciate it. Eight, regular meetings to keep up the process. We recommend to a lot of our clients, it might take you two to four meetings over a period of two months to get your relationship going, then meet every month to regularly drive the process. Nine, be reasonable with each other. There might be times where you might come up dry for a few months and they come up dry, but keep it going. Um, and 10, enjoy the warm referrals. And this is another big thing in the strategy, which is what I like, is let's say you're, you know, you're, at, you're chasing corporates and you're out cold calling. It can be really hard because a lot of corporates get at least 10 phone calls a day. So, like, if you're just cold calling, you're just one of those 10 phone calls a day. Whereas when you're introduced to them and you get in through the back door, you just have a much higher probability of winning that client and getting that result. 
fact, what's your take on that one, Grant? Uh, that's the, the, there's no doubt about that, and, and I've met people who have, uh, one guy I know was, he'd been trying for two years, he's a station, in the stationary business to get into a, uh, get into a particular uh, corporate company and hadn't been able to, and in his role in, in the networking, he is involved in uh, running a team uh, in the network, and they had a visitor come along to the meeting, he caught up with that person afterwards to see how they are, how they got along, they built a bit of a relationship, and then that guy said, look, um, oh, they actually met in a cafe near that building, and, he, and the, my guy was saying, oh, look, I've been trying to get into an office there, and, and the person knew someone in the office, he managed to get in. So that was just uh, two years of trying himself, no good, and then managed to get in just through a warm referral. Yep, and very, very powerful. So that's my take on the channel partnering, and uh, I think it's absolutely amazing. And this is one thing um, what I love about Grant Dempsey, and before I hand over to him, Grant Dempsey actually trained me basically in basic networking, so the stuff I now teach and make money out of, Grant taught me for free. So thank you, Grant. You know, uh, I appreciate you giving me all your free knowledge. So, <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the thing was, um, no, my life, if you know me a few years ago, my life sucked big time. And to me, in through listening to Grant and learning from him, it really got me going. So now without further ado, Grant Dempsey's turn. Give him a hand, everyone. Yay, go yeah, Grant. Yeah. It's all yours. Yeah. <laughs> go liberal. Okay, Grant, take it over. We're all yours. Oh, look, thanks, Ed. Look, it is interesting because it, it's probably about three years ago that Ed and I met and I was starting, starting out the business uh, for networking, so I was kind of looking for any warm bodies I could get and Ed came along and we got to know each other and that's been a, a really great ride. Uh, Ed's been able to, he, he's a hard worker and the stuff that he's talking to you about he actually does. Uh, a lot of people out there talk about doing stuff, Ed's actually doing it and so he is an expert in this stuff. He has met so many people in the last three years. He's brought so many people together, uh, and so he knows what he's talking about. Uh, my, my slide there, Lone Rangers Die, I think it's, it really is, it's pretty hard these days to go it alone in small business. There, not many people can accomplish that. You do get the odd person who is a, that kind of alpha personality and incredibly focused and driven, and they go out there and they're able to, to make a go of it, but they are fairly few and far between, and um, look, I've met a few of them, and, and relationship-wise, they often struggle in that area, so you, you really need to in, to form uh, channel partners and to, to get ahead in small business. I've got a quote there by Richard Branson who says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And we've seen that in 4Networking and I was talking to a guy at our Christmas party uh, just on Friday night and he's he's interesting because he joined us for six months and then he had a bit of a gap. We didn't see him for a while. He'd just started his business and then he came back again and now uh, he's just a 4Networking uh, groupie because He's got, he was telling me on Friday night, uh, since he's been in 4Networking for two years, and bearing in mind he had a bit of a gap in there, he's brought in $75,000 worth of business to his, to his business, but more importantly, he's met people who have been able to put him in contact with the people he wants to get in contact with. So he tried on his own and he couldn't, and now he's, uh, now he's really into it. The other point there is that big businesses use partnerships all the time. Ed's mentioned those and that we need to as well. So we, so as small business people, we need to be looking to join forces and move forward. So look, I've, I've got a couple of slides there. Why partner? And that's to, to really we want to partner to gain a competitive advantage. Uh, that's, that's what I see as the key. You can try and do it alone, but... You're up, if, if you've got a partnership, you've, you're going to have a competitive advantage over, over, over your competition. Partnerships are the ideal way to build a quality business, and networking is the ideal way to build quality partnerships. So, you know, Ed, you've been networking for three years. Would you see that networking has been the main way that you've, you've uh, been introduced and built your partnerships? Absolutely, like my whole business, excuse me, I'm eating a piece of chocolate right now, I didn't know Grant was going to put me on the spot. <laughs> exactly that, Grant, I mean, my business, 
Um, I started in a very destitute sort of position after destroying my life during the GFC and for me, my original business was built through face-to-face -face networking and building partners and getting quality referrals. So if I didn't do that, I'd be dead by now quite easily. And look, there's people who spend large amounts of time, energy and money networking because they use it as their primary form of marketing. So we know it works. The, the, some of the benefits of, of, of partnerships are, and Ed, Ed's touched on some of these, so cross referrals. I, I think, and we were talking about this as a group the other day, is that in networking you, you meet a lot of people and, and you get along with a lot of people, but when we're talking about channel partners, we're really talking about people who have made a, a conscious decision to build a relationship with and advocate for them. So we're really looking at people who are proactively looking out for potential referrals and uh, opportunities for us as business. So I might meet uh, two accountants and one of them I can get along with them both and one of them I, I'm going to keep an eye out for. I start to, to, to uh, get to know them and their business but the other one I might enter into an agreement with and with that person when I have my clients come in, I'm going to be proactively asking them what are they doing for their accounting, how are they doing their financial forecasts, are they doing budgeting. So I'm going to be actually proactively looking for clients for this person and that's really probably the difference between having a channel partner and just having a, a, a network buddy. And that's a pretty important thing to, to understand I think. One of the other benefits is you get a greater, you can provide a greater range of services to your clients. So again, like if, if you have these channel partners, when you have a client come in, you can recommend and you can look at parts of the business and look, I can get someone to, to give you a call, see if they can help you in that, give you some ideas in that area. So you're actually adding greater value to your clients by offering them quality services with people that are proven and that you trust. Uh, another another benefit of, of having these partnerships is that you can appear, appear bigger than you are. So you might be uh, stuck in, in a small office in your house with just you and your cat. And, uh, <laughs> but it's a cute fluffy cat, I reckon. <laughs> uh, but you can actually appear bigger because what you're doing is, is you have these partners behind you backing you up. So it's not a fake appearance you actually can deliver and, uh, even though, and appear bigger and deliver on that. And you can team up and bid for larger projects. So you might be uh, looking, have an opportunity to uh, go for a project, a tender or, or, or some sort of quote, uh, and you don't provide all the services, but with having partners that you can rely on and you know the quality of their work, you can team up and go for those. And you can create virtual organisations. Uh, one of our, our, our members, Glenn Milak, he, he talks about this and I've really taken this on board. He, he's come from corporate, he's in financial advice and he, he's a financial advisor and he really talks about filling the seats. So when he went into business, he knew he needed someone who's going to do marketing for him, he knew he needed someone to manage his books, he knew he needed uh, all these different roles because that's what he had in corporate. When he was in his office in corporate, he had Mary in accounts and he had Bob in marketing and he had all these people he could draw on. And so that's one of the things that he's done and I think as a small business owner, one of the, the things that you is really useful for you to do is to look at what roles do I need in my business? What seats do I need to fill? And who can I, who can I get to do that? Is that something that you've done in your business yet? Is that yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, um, not only just acquiring uh, clients, but in my business, I have the services of lots of people. So Gwen, who's my financial planner, who you just spoke about, um, you know, uh, Matt Craig from Mind Actually, do my websites. Um, you know, oh God, I can't even remember. There's heaps <laughs> of people. Oh, heaps, oh, Lauren, the virtual assistant. There's uh, Greg Mason, the designer. Um, I can't even remember that you got me off guard, but I hire about eight different people in my business. And I, I see that we have um, Paul Schaefer online who's from uh, Paul's Productions, Video Productions. Paul has a, has a great uh, connection with one of our members in Wollongong. So 
Paul does a lot of the work for, <laughs> he's just saying hey, um, he, does a, he does a lot of the recording work for uh, one of our members, Steve Dixon, and they cross promote each other and I know that Paul's profile in the Illawarra has risen significantly because of that. Uh, and uh, Steve gets some great video work done, so that's a real win-win. Yeah, so I think, I think what Grant's really touching on is, is the importance of, you know, uh, having good partners and working with them and really referring each other business. And to me, again, um, I'd be dead if I didn't do the strategy. It was one of the cornerstone strategies to build my business, especially if you're on a shoestring budget, because as long as you can pay for the coffee and lunches, then, you know, uh, be my guest. So very, very good strategy. I still can't remember for the life of me who else I hire. Oh, of course, video people and all that sort of thing. So lots of people. And, and the other thing with that, and one of the points that, that Ed just mentioned there is um, it enables you to build your, your business. You can scale quickly when you've got great partners because you can just give them more work and you're not bogged down doing the work that you shouldn't be doing. One of the key mantras of being successful in a small business uh, is you know, only do the things that only you can do and get everyone else to do the rest. So there are some of the benefits of partnerships. Yep. And also as well, please get through your questions. So we've got the chat box there. Give us some questions. We love questions and really want to answer your specific questions to give you the best thing possible. Back to you, Grant. <laughs> so there's do, look, we'll just whip through this one fairly quickly, but there's different types of partnerships and, and I know we just kind of need to cover on this. Um, we're really talking about channel partnerships today. So there's collaborations, which is the most popular and they can be long term, so that can be like sharing an office. So Glenn, who I mentioned, and one of uh, our other members, um, George, the accountant, they've gone. They've, they share an office, so they're sharing the rent, they're sharing the uh, the cost of the the phone lines, the internet. Uh, they've got a shared copy. All those expenses they've been able to make more manageable by collaborating, and that's a, obviously with a lease, a commercial lease. That's a longer term option for them. Uh, but you can also do short term collaborations like. Uh, putting on an event, you might want to put on an event to uh, to target your your core customers, and you want to put on a high end event, really good quality. So for you to stump to do that, to get an event organizer to do the marketing, uh, to pay for the event would would be thousands and thousands of dollars. If you partner, uh, which we've had members do recently, uh, you might partner with a PR firm, uh, with a web designer, with uh, an event manager, and therefore you're sharing not only the cost, but you're sharing the expertise and you're, you're providing a, a much higher quality product than if you just did it by yourself. So collaborations are really popular. Uh, there's equity partners. Now they tend to be more like your lawyers and your accountants where, there's, where, where people share a percentage of the profit and the liabilities and, and we're not so much talking about those, but that's one form. And there's joint ventures and that's where you really form uh, where two people might come together and form a third company. And that's where you combine the resources, knowledge and skills. Uh, but we're, So we're really looking at this point and suffice to say that if you're entering into those sort of agreements, you really need legal um, legal advice to, before you, you go into those. So, uh, But with collaboration, some of them, and certainly with going into some of the longer term ones, like sharing an office, uh, you might need some legal advice and all that. So we're under... Un underlining anything we say today with get your own advice, yeah. don't rely on us, we're not lawyers. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> unless you give us money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but no, I was going to say on a serious note as well, um, you got to remember, and, and this is a bit of a misconception I have, is a lot of people run around there talking about, oh, I'm going to do joint ventures, I'm going to do joint ventures. Mm. And the first thing I say is for most people in small business, joint ventures are actually an overkill or inappropriate. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and the thing is a lot of people sort of get, they sort of get, uh, bent up and all worked out of shape saying I've got to form joint ventures. Hmm. Joint ventures is just one form of channel partnering. Uh, a form of channel partnering is just simply exchanging referrals of someone. So the thing is is that you don't need um, to run out there and you know, um, you know, have a criminal defence lawyer draft your agreement and spend thousands of dollars. It can be just you introducing people to each other and you having a process to manage that. So. Please, um, you know, we're just saying these as options, but quite often the most powerful ones that I've seen done are just done over a handshake. Have you seen that, Grant? Exactly, and and some people would say, you know, you draw up a document, you put it in the in the drawer, and if you ever have to open the drawer, basically the partnership's over. Yeah, so, yeah. so, but having said that, you know, certainly when you're looking at things like equity partnership and, and proper joint ventures, 
you, you do need to get some legal advice. Yeah. So and do that, but but many of the and 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 the majority of the collaborations and partnerships that we see are, are like Ed mentioned, and they more that they're less formal. Uh, well, they are formal, but they're they're not as legalistic as you, as you like. So so some tips for great partnerships is look if you've got any questions about um, things, just flick them through. But some tips. And Ed mentioned this before about being dirty. You got to make sure that you like the person. Uh, you got to start with the end in mind, uh, and you need a consensus on the outcome. So what 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 is it that you want to achieve? And even today, uh, Ed and my wife Karen and I have had a meeting, and we're, we're talking about what do we want to achieve at the end of 2014. Ed Ed does a lot of uh, work with us, and 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 you know, we want to know what he wants to achieve at the end of 2014, so we can help him do that. It's not just about what he's doing for us. Uh, we need to be clear on roles and tasks. You need to have a clear exit strategy, and that's that's a really important one that people don't think about. If you're if you're entering into particularly a formalised one, and if it's, if it's just a handshake, it's a bit different, but if you're in, entering into a formalised agreement, you need to know how, to, how, does, how do you get out of that because it might be something happens to you or someone in your family need to get out or it might that just be that you stop getting on with your partner uh, and you need to get out. And look, you might think you're getting on really well now, but uh, small business history is littered with uh, mates who have gone into business and together and end up not talking to each other. So you do need to have a look. Look, I'd, I'd also suggest when you're looking at, at forming partnerships that you involve some sort of third party as well, particularly if they're formalised, such a coach like Ed, so that you can just get a third person come in, seek some advice, and um, because you might you might go and talk to someone and think this is a great idea, and it's good just to run it by someone else. Uh, if it, obviously, if it involves you know, leases and legal things, you need to have a talk to a, a lawyer, but if it's just about referrals, it's good to have a talk to someone else as well. And, and document things is a good idea. So that's just some basic tips. And a simple way of documenting it is, let's say you meet with someone, you, you want to start referring each other. Um, you, all you just simply do is it's just straightforward. Um, just could be an email just saying we're going to exactly. do this. And the good thing is Paul Sheaf has got a great um, a great thing. One of his colleagues, uh, Steve Dixon, in Breakthrough to, um, Breakthrough for Business out of the Wollongong sector, they call their term a strategic alliance. So, and I've, Paul said this to me before. He says, "Look, I have a strategic alliance with uh, Breakthrough for Business, and we refer work to each other." So, strategic alliance, channel partners partners, whatever you call them. Generally what I do is I just say I just use the word partners or one of your allies. You know, that's usually the way that I refer to it out in the street. Yeah, for sure. So you need to one of the great ways is working out what what it is you want to achieve and, and what do you need to do that. And there's a bunch of reasons why uh, partnerships, be they at a small uh, informal level or at a formal level fail, and that's usually because there's unclear leadership, there's value and cultural differences. And, and that's why you do need to get to know people before you actually go into business with them because uh, I don't know if you've ever had, we used to have some, I, I had a very, very good school friend who, uh, you know, we got on really well and then we actually ended up living with them for a week when our kids were very young and their kids were very young. And that's when we got, when we realised that we have very, very, we see the world very differently when we live with them for a week. And up until then, we'd never have thought that that, um, that would have been that way. So you do need to get to know people because at a cursory meeting, you can seem like you get on. Uh, poor integration, and I think that might be spelled wrong, disagreement on roles, strategy and policies, no plans, no accountability, uh, and lack of expert advice and documentation. So like Ed said, it, you, you can have a, a drawn-up legal agreement or you can have an email just saying, hi, Bob, just a review of our discussion the other day. We we're going to agree to work together and to actively promote one another and look for uh, potential clients for each other. And you need to measure that because if you're sending Bob uh, five good referrals a month and he's not giving you any over three months, you need to be able to have a look at that and see what am I getting from this and what is he getting. And that might sound a little bit... Um, uh, that might sound a little bit mercenary, but this is business and you do need to uh, get a return. 
Yeah. And just so you know, um, we're keeping on this. Grant's wife, Karen Dempsey, is on the line, so I think Grant's going to get all nervous. Are you terrified that your wife's listening in on this webinar, Grant? Are you just panicking now, dude? I, I saw that name come up. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> don't say that about Karen. Karen's a nice woman, Grant. So there you go. There you go. And the other, well, the other thing I'd just like to add to what Grant's saying there is um, where I see channel partners, in my experience, usually tip over is it's not win-win. Um, both people walk in, they're telling each other how great they are, and at the end of the day, only one person's referring. So one of my channel partners who's a good friend of mine, I've referred to shitloads of business. And the thing is, I haven't really received much back. And, and, and to me, that's, and I had a chat with them, and to me, it's not quite fair. So look, not all the time, you're not going to be able to refer buckets and buckets of business. And my view is, personally, is if you've got a channel partner, and let's say they're trying their best, but they're having no luck, the way I look at it, as long as they're trying, yeah. I usually don't really care. As long as they're putting in the effort, it usually doesn't phase me. Because well, what's your take on that one, Grant? Oh, I think so. I think that it, it, it's it, it, there needs to be some mutual benefit, and and by the same token, we're all about helping each other out. So, but if people are just lazy, you need to move on. Yeah, and that's what I'm getting at. It's not so much the results I'm picking on. It's more people being lazy. We just don't like that, and it just doesn't help anyone. So, very good insight, Grant. So finding great partners, look, there's, of course, networking's uh, fantastic for this because you really want to try before you buy. And uh, how do you find great partners? Well, you need to be strategic about it and not opportunistic. And that's what I mentioned before. You need to think, what roles do I need to fill in my business? What, what people do I need to help me achieve what I want to do and to get where I want to go? So what is your plan? What do you do? What do you want to achieve? And so just uh, about a month ago, Karen and I went away for a couple of days. Uh, we had sheets and sheets of butcher's paper where we were planning for 2014. And the thing that, that really stuck out to me is that we're never going to achieve a quarter of this if we don't have people doing that. So we need now, we've, we've identified some and we need to kind of start being more proactive about uh, filling these roles. We need to start looking for channel partners for ourselves or strategic alliances to fill those roles. So, what uh, these are the sort of questions? What in terms of being strategic? What what needs to happen for you to get there? What what roles do you need to fill? Who 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 do you need? Do you need someone if you want to run events? Do you need to form a, a, a relationship with someone who's an events manager? Do you? Uh, need if you're going to do a lot of marketing, maybe you need to connect with a, a copywriter or something so you can put out quality copy. Uh, and you can't do it all, so you've got to fill those roles, and you've got to work out what am I going to am I going to pay or partner? And some of the roles I'm just going to have to pay, and that's okay. But if you look and say I've got all these uh, tasks that I need to accomplish, and I can't go and pay for all of them, then you've got to divvy them up and work out the ones and then be proactively looking for people that you can partner with. Yeah, yeah. Now, very good strategy. And Paul, um, Paul, love your questions and get through your questions, everyone else. Paul made a good point is the value of a referral. So, you know, you might, let's say, give uh, one person tons of small referrals, but they might give you a big one. So you want to sort of consider everything quite fairly in that regard. Yeah, that's a good point because you can get 10 referrals is what Paul's saying from one person, they're a dollar each, or one referral from another person at $10. So you, you need to look at that and, and it might be that you have both of those people on board. And uh, the other thing is recently I was talking to a, uh, a young guy who's got a video company and he's got a client who has a dance school that She's getting on in years, and the dance score has been getting smaller and smaller each year. Uh, and he's starting to think, oh, gee, I'm not making so much money because uh, there's not so many people there buying the DVDs. But he's hung in with her because he really likes her, and she's been good to him, and, and she's stuck with him. So you know, he doesn't want to flick her off when things are getting tough for her. So he's hung in with her. And uh, he's organised to do it again this year, and, and he's going, oh, I'm not going to make much money out of this one. Uh, but you know what? He was telling me the other day that she gave him a referral uh, that is going to be a very, very big job for him. So you've got to weigh things up. It's not just about the money. Exactly, exactly. So it's a very, very good point. So, you know, as part of finding great partners, we always say get out there and meet with lots of people and make sure it works for mutual benefit. So, 
Um, Zig Ziglar says that you can have everything in life you want if you just help other people get what they want. And that's really what partnering is about. It's about helping other people get what they want. So I think one of the mistakes that, that people often make is they sit down and they work out what they want uh, and they don't take into consideration what they can bring to the table to help other people. So I know uh, in the early days that um, when we started uh, for networking, Ed was out there helping people set up LinkedIn profiles, <laughs> which was kind of new and cutting edge for some people back then. And, and uh, he, he went out and helped a lot of people. Uh, he had time on his hands back then because you were moving from transitioning from yeah. employment to uh, small business, so you, yep. were, you, you were cash poor and time rich. Yeah. And, uh, and instead of sitting around waiting for the phone to ring, he got out there and helped people, and it's come back. It came back. So there's a really good, I think that's a really good um, principle in, in partnerships. What do you bring to the table? Work out what you want uh, and what you're looking for, but also work out what you can offer people, what skills you've got, what opportunities can you provide to people. So if you live by this and look for the same, uh, look for others who do the same, I think uh, you'll, you'll, you'll do well in partnering. Absolutely, and be profitable and have fun. You've got to have fun. You've got to have partners who you can have fun with. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly go back because I've had a few good questions about this and a few things come in. And I'm just going to do a quick recap of the 10 points um, just while, uh, while we're here. So this is the 10 steps, and sort of Grant went over, oh, went too far. Um, this is the 10-step super process that I just want to spend a bit of time just sort of going through. Now, First things first is get out there, network and identify potential partners. Two, meet potential partners for coffee or lunch. Three, organize a follow-up meeting to openly talk about partnering. Four, work out an arrangement that suits you both. Five, be the first one to give an introduction. Six, ask for some in return if, they're not, if you're not getting any. Seven, deliver perfect service. Meet regularly, drive the process, which is eight. Nine, be reasonable. And ten, enjoy the warm referral. So that is part of our very, very special process. And Here's a big thing. We've actually come to the end of our webinar, so feel free to get your questions through. Um, Grant and I love being hired. So Grant runs 4Networking Australia, which is the business community. So if you haven't been to 4Networking, love you to come along. Grant's also a business relationship expert too. So if you need to talk to him, that is great. And make sure you visit my website at www.excellenceabove.com.au. So that's it. Our emails are there, grant at 4networking.com.au, edward at excellenceabove.com.au. So feel free to contact us. And Grant, um, look, please get your questions through before we stop recording. Grant, did you just want to say a few words or anything that comes to mind while people do their final wrap-up? Yeah, sure. Ed. Look, as I mentioned, we just had our, our Christmas party on Friday night, and one of the things that really spun my wheels about that is uh, I put it at the end just there, you know, have fun and be profitable, and it was great. Okay, people have had a few drinks. They're feeling happy, and it was great just hearing the stories, that, 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 the, the, the support that they've got from the network, and we're really, and our network is a relationship network. It's about building partnerships. We just provide some meetings for you to meet people and develop those partnerships. That's simply the, the underlying uh, principles of what we do. And it was just fabulous hearing people come up and say, hey, look, thanks, we've had a fantastic year. We've got some great friends. We've got some great business colleagues, uh, and we're loving business. And I had two or three people who came up and said, look, the, the first six months were hell. I was struggling. I was wondering what I was going to do. The wife was on my case to get back and get a job. And now, look, I've got a six-figure business, and um, it, I'm, I'm just enjoying it. So build quality partnerships. Uh, look, look for quality people. Build quality partnerships, and, and you'll, you'll and really enjoy it. Beautiful. Thank you. We've got some questions through, and I think we're going to answer this as part of the recording. So please get more through while answering them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, put, I'm going to say my point first and let Grant speak of it. So... Um, Karen, Karen Dempsey, which is Grant's uh, husband, or Grant's wife, I should say, Grant's her husband, says excellent stuff, guys. So, Grant, what's your view on your wife being pleased with the webinar? What's your interpretation there, Grant? <laughs> um, look, I guess the ultimate partnership is uh, a husband and wife, or, or you know, like, so, uh, and, and Karen and I have been married for 20 plus years. That's what you say when you can't remember exactly how many. Um, so, um, and and we've had we've we've had a really great partnership, and we've been in business, and we've faced tough times and great times together. And it's when you've got uh, good 
good partner beside you. Uh, it just makes the tough times easier and the good times even better. Oh, there you go. I've got a lot to learn as I, uh, as a single man of 35 years old. There you go. <laughs> so I've got a relationship with my cat. So thank you for that. Um, now, um, Paul Sheaf, who's been a great contributor, is um, Paul's just made a reference to um, the amount of people that has greatly benefited his life and his, uh, basically Paul's making reference to the amount of friends that he's made and how it's really benefited his life. And I can say the same thing, Paul, not only me building a six-figure business and turning my life around, but me making amazing friends, which I never really had before. What's your take on that more personal side of things, Grant, with networking? Yeah, look, one of the things that I'm really pushing at the moment with uh, networking is for people to look at the what we call the multiple value streams of networking. So, and we've mentioned referrals tonight, and referrals are very important. I don't want to under, underestimate that, but referrals are really the tip of the iceberg. If you think of an iceberg sitting above the water, referrals on top, there's a whole lot of the iceberg underneath. And I think the majority of the benefits of networking are, uh, are the non-referral aspects. And look, we have people who just say, I've met, you know, the, the, the main reason they, the main benefit they get from for networking is the friendships. We have other people who say the main benefit that they've got is the, the confidence in uh, being with other business people and presenting. Uh, we have all these people who say that the advice, the collaborations have formed, and that will change. So for six months, the main benefit for one person will be friendships. For the next six months, it might be confidence. So it's really... There's all these other benefits, and Paul's touched on that as well. And, and the underlying point of that is, is we have lots of people who say, I'm a better business person because of all these other things. And that means that I sell more, that I'm more confident, confident and um, I'm delivering better services. Yeah, amazing. Very good answer. And thank you, Grant. And got a great question from uh, Louise. So thank you for that. So I'll just read it out. Um, so Louise is saying, I, um, I'm involved in a, quite a technical role and I can see the value of networking. How many hours per week is the best uh, developed networking meeting versus potential partners versus getting the work done? And my, before I let Grant answer that one, my personal take is, and this is just general, I mean, obviously for personalised advice, come see us, but as general advice off the hip, most people that I see do well go to about two networking events a week. And what they do is they go to about two networking events a week, they meet two people on average each week, and two people doesn't sound like much, but... Real, realistically speaking, even though you're only meeting two people a week, over 10 weeks, that's like 20 people. So um, to me, that's a good model. You want to build a certain amount of networking each week. It might be once a week. Um, let's say you're busy in your business. It might be once or twice a week. Or let's say you've got nothing to do like I did when you started your business. you got no money and, you know, everyone hates you. You might go five times a week like I did. So I just had nothing else to do. What's your take on that one, Grant? Look, that, that's good advice. And I guess, uh, Louise, it, it's really looking at what, how much time you can, you can slot in for networking and the type of networking that you can do. Because as Ed mentioned right at the start in the presentation, it's not just about the actual event, it's time following up. So if you're going to two to three networking events a week but you're not following up, you really need, you're better off going to one and following up. So looking at uh, and, and if it's a monthly, say you, you choose, like our meetings are fortnightly, uh, then there's lots of ways that you can follow up and, and just keep contact with people. And that, that can be through like forum activity uh, and it can be through Facebook or social activity. So it's really about continuing. The networking, networking groups like ours are really providing you a platform to meet people. It's then up to you to use develop those relationships with the people you choose to outside. So it might be uh, meeting someone for lunch that you meet. So it's really the follow-up that's going to give you, yield you the results, not so much the actual number of meetings you attend. It's the number of people that you follow up and build a relationship with. Exactly. And we just found out, Karen Dempsey, it's actually Grant's daughter, Sophia, that's uh, logged in and saying that my daddy is so cool. I, I, I think your daddy's cool, uh, Sophia, just let you know that. Do you think you're cool, Grant Dempsey? <laughs> I, I think they're both online then, so. <laughs> Yeah, so that's great. And the other bit is, um, so we've got a question from Brendan. Does Small Network encourage business presentation from members? And I'll answer that straight Of course we do. We love presentations and people getting the information out there. And moving on quickly, it's so almost towards the end. Uh, Paul Sheep, I love your uh, involvement. Two per week also become exponential, exactly. Yeah. In fact, I reckon you can answer that one. Um, how does networking become exponential, Grant, as time passes? 
It, it's the, you know, we talk about selling through the room rather than in the room, that the people at the networking event are not your market, they're your route to market. So if there's 10 people in a room and you don't have any business opportunity with any of them, then you're wasting your time. But if each of those 10 people know 10 people and they know what you do, uh, they like you, know you and trust you, then if they tell 10 people, that's 100, 100 potential contacts that you've got. And that's the an exponential uh, component. The other thing is we've seen uh, now that we're almost in our third year and we've got people who've been around for two plus years, those people are starting to be able to track uh, referrals or work that's coming in that originated from a 4N referral but has then kind of gone uh, around. So they did a job for, for one person from a 4N referral and then from that person they've got another job. And so if you track it right back, then there's a lot of value in that initial referral. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, very good point. In fact, in, fact um, in the old days, my four net, my business was basically 100% for networking. Now it's about 60%. But then again, a lot of those referrals are from the originators of for networking. So I'd be dead without them. So that's really good. Oh, thank you. Got a great compliment from one of our members, Drina. Grant and Edward enjoyed it. This topic came as the right time for me as some formalizing strategic partnership. Thank you. Pleasure, Drina. Great to have you here. And uh, yeah, look, um, yeah, uh, Grant, on that uh, one. Brent, oh, well, I was just going to say, the one Brendan's saying, oh, we talk about that, that do, does 4 and encourage business presentations oh, yeah. from members? And yes, we certainly do, and that's one of the things. We've, we've actually had a debate on our forum about, we have a 40-second round where people introduce themselves. Uh, and that's one, one presentation, albeit 40 seconds, but we had a debate about the value of it. And the consensus is that uh, it is a very good way for people to refine uh, their, their, their presentation skills, but we also do 15 to 20 minute presentations at each meeting and each uh, members have the opportunity to do that at any of our meetings uh, and some, me some members have used that incredibly effectively and basically built their businesses uh, on that. Yeah, so no, very, very good point. So I think that's it. There's no more questions. Anything else you want to sort of cover off, Grant, before we wind this one up? Uh, well, you mentioned Drina. Drina's, um, Drina rocks. <laughs> yeah, we think Dreen is awesome. Oh, pleasure, Brendan. And um, yeah, yeah. And um, no, it's really good. So uh, you've done great, Paul. And thank you, Paul. And look, I think we're done. We've gone over time. And guys, I just want to say, look, um, please contact us if you've got any questions. Uh, the email address is there. If it's on YouTube, you've seen this recording afterwards, let us know. And make sure you book into our upcoming webinars. So I just want to say on behalf of me, I'm going to stop the recording. We're going to finish everything. But thank you from Edwards here. What do you have to say to the audience, Grant? So it's good night from me and it's good night from him. Good night. Good night, guys. See you next time and send us your emails. Bye, guys.